How's it going everybody? Welcome back to my C Sharp programming series. Today we're going to be looking at abstract classes and methods. Um, before we get into that, when we think of a class type, we assume that the application will create objects of that type, which is what we've been doing this entire time we've been using classes. In some cases, it is useful to declare classes for which the programmer never intends to actually instantiate objects or create an object of. So such classes are called abstract classes because they are used only as uh, base elements in, her in uh, inheritance hier hierarchies. We kind of re refer to them as abstract base classes. So the abstract base class cannot be used to instantiate objects because, as you'll soon see, abstract classes are sort of incomplete. Um, the, derived, the classes that are derived from the abstract class basically define the uh, missing pieces that um, we did not um, include in our um, abstract class. Now, the purpose of an abstract class is primarily to provide an appropriate base class form which other classes can inherit and kind of share somewhat of a common design. So in the shape hierarchy, for example, um, derived classes inherit the notion of what it means to be a shape. Common attributes, attributes like location, color, and border thickness, and behaviors such as draw, move, resize, and change color. Classes that can be used to instantiate objects are called concrete classes, which is what we've been using. These classes provide the implementation of every single method that we have declared, and some of the implementations can be inherited as well. So for example, we could derive the concrete class circle, square, and triangle from the abstract base class um, two-dimensional shape. Similarly, we could derive concrete classes sphere, cube, and tetrahedron from abstract base class three-dimensional shape and abstract base classes are too general to create real objects. They specify only what is going to be common in the classes that will be derived from them. Um, we need to be more specific before we create objects. So for example, if you send the draw message to an abstract class uh, two-dimensional shape, the class knows that two-dimensional shape should be drawable, but it does not know what specific shape to draw, so it cannot implement a real draw method. The concrete class is its job is to provide the specifics and make it reasonable to instantiate objects. Now, um, not all inheritance hierarchies will contain abstract classes, but programmers often write client code that use only abstract base class types to reduce uh, client code's dependencies on um, sort of like a range of specific derived class types. So, abstract classes, um, they can contain many levels of the hierarchy, and so in, in our shape example, uh, we begin with the abstract class shape, and then on the next level we have two-dimensional and three-dimensional shape, and then a level after that we have um, the concrete classes for the two-dimensional and three-dimensional shapes, such as circle, square, sphere, cube, so on and so forth. So you basically make an abstract class by declaring it with the keyword abstract right here. <clears throat> And an abstract class normally contains one or more abstract methods, and an abstract method will basically contain the the uh, level of access, the abstract, the the um, return type, and the um, the name of the function. So this right here would be an abstract method. Um, the return type void, no, no return type, and draw. And notice the semicolon. It's not going to contain a definition. That is an abstract uh, method. Now, a, a class that contains abstract methods must be declared as an abstract class, even if it contains concrete methods. So basically, if you have one abstract method here, the class must be um, con de defined as abstract as well. Now, each concrete derived class of an abstract base class also must provide concrete implementations of the base class's abstract methods, which um, basically, like our get and set accessor here, um, properties can also be declared as abstract or virtual, and then overridden in derived classes with the override keyword, just like a method can. Um, this will allow an abstract base class to specify common properties of its derived classes. <clears throat> So the semicolon after the get and set keywords indicate that we provide no implementation 
for these accessors. An abstract property may omit implementations for the get accessor, the set accessor, or even both. Um, it depends on, on what you're exactly trying to accomplish. Now, concrete derived classes must provide implementation for every single accessor declared in the abstract property. Um, when both get and set accessors are specified, um, as is shown above here, um, every concrete derived class must implement both. So basically, an abstract class declares common attributes and behaviors of various classes that inherit from it, either directly or indirectly in it, the class hierarchy. An abstract class will contain typically one or more abstract methods or properties that concrete classes must override. The instance variables, concrete methods, and concrete properties of an abstract class are subject to the normal rules of inheritance. Now, attempting to instantiate an object of an abstract class will result in a compilation error and failure to implement a base class's abstract methods and properties in a derived class is a compilation error un unless the derived class is also declared abstract. So although we cannot instantiate objects of abstract base classes, you can see, you, I'm going to show you why you can use abstract base classes to declare variables that will hold references to objects of concrete classes that are derived. <clears throat> so polymorphism <clears throat> is particularly effective for implementing the layered software systems when there is a multiple level of inheritance, such like as in operating systems like Windows, for example. Each type of physical device could operate quite differently from the others. So commands can read or write data um, to and from the devices, and for each device, the operating system will use a piece of software called the device driver, which we're all familiar with, to control all communication between the system and the device. So looking at a simple hierarchy here, this is going to be our abstract class, which I'm using for this example, and we've been working with the commission employee and base plus commission employee. Um, we derive the base plus commission employee from commission employee, but now we're going to be deriving the commission employee from the base abstract class employee. We can also, that will also allow us to derive the salaried employee from employee class and hourly employee from the employee class. So this is going to kind of be like a multiple level um, of inheritance here. And I've already created the abstract class employee which basically the has contains the basic variables um, that are going to be common in all of our derived classes. All salaried, all employees basically will have a first name, last name, and social security number. Everything else might be slightly different, but we can include other things such as, you know, birth date, start date, hire date, things that will be common to every single class. Um, just for the example here, I'm going to keep it really, really small and compact. We're also going to give it a constructor, the toString method, and its earnings. And now notice how that this is abstract, so we, were, we are not going to provide any implementation for it. Um, and now in order not to make this video too long, I kind of threw a lot of information at you. Um, in my next video, we will be creating the concrete classes, which are derived from the employee class. We'll be creating the salaried employee, hourly employee, and if it's not too long, I, I might throw these two classes in there as well. But that's all I wanted to cover for today. I want to thank you guys for watching. Please rate, comment, and subscribe, and I hope to see you for my next video.